Welcome to the Fweebs Podcast, where basically we talk about whatever the fuck we want because we do whatever the fuck we want. That's right. Our show is all about keeping it real, going off topic, being unfiltered and raw while sharing our own experiences and life stories. Join us weekly as we help remove your boredom one episode at a time. I'm called... But comma let me down. <laughs> Expression. Try to call. Me down. Drop the fucking mic down and grab. I'm gonna be like grabbing it. <laughs> we got a podcast to record. Hey, we got a podcast to record. Three, two, one. What? Yes. Ah. No, no oh. action. Look at oh. it. <laughs> What's up, up please? <laughs> What is up? <laughs> What's up? I wish I had a fan. Oh up? my god. So I'm Tiff. And I'm Gaddy. Welcome to Please Podcast. Welcome to the Please Podcast. Right, so episode six is going to be, I want to say, entertaining, controversial, but it's also gonna leave you guys with something to kind of think about. Like I think that this should be like a talking point that you should have with like your friends at dinner or like with coworkers or just like anybody that you can stem an intellectual conversation with. Yeah. So, um, today's topic is going to be queer representation. Yeah. Queer representation in the media. Queer representation in the media. The good, the bad and the ugly. Yeah. And obviously, we, we talk a lot about the ultimatum here because, you know, it got Tiff. And Unfortunately. they're going to be a superstar one day. They just don't know it yet. Um, and I just scary. It's all scary. They're going to love it. Love <laughs> no, but I think the, you know, just from the comments and everything we see the buzz going on with freaking Bud Light and the, the trans person on the Bud Light. And I mean, it's just, it's interesting to see the comments. And for the last, like, couple weeks, I've been just looking at the comments and honestly, like it makes me want to laugh. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. I feel like it's kind of sad. Like it's 2023. Yeah. Like it's 2023. I feel like in the early two thousands, we craved to have queer representation in the media Mm -hmm. and now we're finally getting it. And it's, it's between all the stuff that's happening. I'm from Florida, so I can talk shit about DeSantis all I want. So all this stuff that DeSantis is pulling. Yeah, all, all of the stuff that Florida's pulling, all of the, like, super, you know, right-winged people, like, and, and we're, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure, like, we're very conservative with our money, but I feel like, for the most part, we're very, very liberal when it comes to everything else. So, it's just, it's hard to see us stepping backward. We're going to start off today with uh, watching the new Ultimatum trailer, and it's already a hot topic in the media right now. There's a lot of buzz going about it. Um, I think that that, if anything, kind of helps us out with viewers and stuff. There are going to be people that are going to be mad and hate it. But they're still going to like watch episode number one and just be like, oh. Either it's for them or it's not for them. It's, yeah, it's either for them or not. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, let's roll right into like. the trailer ready, and then um, she's not. let's get a reaction from it. Everyone is here for the same reason. Someone in your relationship has issued an ultimatum. I feel like I found my person. You'll choose someone and move in together in a trial marriage. And then you'll do the same thing all over again with the person that you arrived with. And whether you leave here engaged, single, or newly in love, each of you will decide what your future holds. I'm going on dates with eight beautiful women. Where's my drink? Like, game on. You're the most masculine person I've ever been on a date with. Fair. <laughs> She's hot, but I'm also into her ex-girlfriend. It's really hard to see a future with you. I was thinking about my view on gender roles. I have no idea if I'd want another relationship or just a hookup. I'm actually embarrassed for you to meet my family. IVF is a very real possibility. Are you starting to save for it? Do you think you're going to get married after this? Your head's in the sand. It's a shit show. I just don't know who I want to spend my life with. The romance is not there for me. Fuck the sex. I don't give a shit about the sex. You mess with the wrong person. Have you ever dated anybody that looks like me? Like a black person? I had the best trial wife that I could have. Now I know what a good marriage looks like for me. Does the marriage with the person I came with look like that too? It's just overwhelming. You want to see both of us fight for you? (laughs) Is that what you want? I think you guys got enough. Okay. 
All right. I feel like that was like super duper juicy. <laughs> Juicy, all the super duper juicy. juicy. I feel like I'm a little bit biased, right? Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, you, yeah. What? So I, I, I have my own reaction to it, which I can't really like reveal too much of it, obviously. Yeah. But um, curious to see what your reaction is to it. Okay, so for the most part, there's like little topics that they talked about, like IVF, like right, like obviously when you're in a queer relationship or you're in a lesbian relationship, whatever it is that you that you guys identify as, like that's something that's a real huge topic it because if you want to have children. One of you is going to have to carry the child. You're going to have to usually get a sperm donor. If not, you kind of already have a lineup of individuals that would donate their sperm, or you're going to adopt a child. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't put two eggs together and make a baby. This doesn't work. At least not yet. At least not yet. Not yet. <laughs> One baby won't need men, and then you guys are really SOL. Yeah. So. No, I think that's really cool that they put in IVF. I, I think the trailer alone, they put, I, how do I say this? I think with this queer reality show finally streaming on a large platform like Netflix, I think they're going all out with all forms of diversity yeah. and hot topics. Yeah. Like, you know, it's kind of hard to put it in other shows. It, you know, they might like sprinkle it here and there. Yeah. But I think it's they not went the all out with as much diversity as they possibly could, all formats, trans, non binary, femmes, mass, I mean, like different races and everything. Mm-hmm. And then they're, um, for instance, like Mal's like, have you ever dated um, a black person that looks like that looks like me? I mean, like, thing. that that's a, like a topic that people talk about yeah, a lot because like, like interracial like, couples, interracial dating, and then you have IVF, and then you have there's just all these different yeah. types of um, topics that are actually very present in not just queer culture and queer relationships, but actually like yeah. a mainstream relationships. Well, what got me too is when you were in there and you were like, you're the most masked person I've ever gone on a date with. Like that wouldn't probably be your normal type, but it's somebody that you're technically considered compatible with. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you had eight women to go on dates with. And then also when, I don't know what the other girl's name is, when they were like, I'm starting to question like my gender. Oh yeah. The, uh, that's Aussie. Aussie. Like the, Aussie? Yeah. Aussie. Like Aussie. Like the dog. Yeah. With Australian accent. Shut the fuck up. Aussie. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like that's another thing. Like that's something too. Like, okay, cool. Like you could be a lesbian or you could be gay or you could be something, but when you meet other individuals, it kind of opens this Pandora's box of, okay, like, let me really question this. Like, is this really who I am or is this who I thought I was? And I'm actually really something else. And I, this is a safe space for me to kind of explore. acknowledge and ex- exactly explore mm-hmm. that. And, and find out where truly am. Yeah. And then it comes to the big question. Are we as a country or a world, but specifically America in 2023, are we at a place in time where we are ready for this type of exposure of queer culture of just a lot of open-minded controversial topics? Are we ready as a culture to put that out there yet? Or are we far behind are we not there yet i think we are i think that normalizing queer existence in the media and in mainstream should have happened a long time ago mm-hmm. you know like back in like the 20s when you like couldn't wear certain types of outfits or like when i always like to refer to footloose because people were like oh dancing was like so dirty back in the day it really wasn't but like you see how like the evolution of time the 1920s weren't really that long ago, you know? And then with all these different milestones that have happened, like, you know, women don't wear pants, women only wear skirts and like the evolution of like fashion and things like that. Like, and they happen in 20, 30 year increments and periods. Mm -hmm. Like, I think this is long overdue. I think it's long overdue as well. A hundred percent. And I think just anything to become normalized, it requires audacious things. It requires audacious activity. It requires being bold. And it, like for instance, having I was actually having a conversation with um, Mal from the Ultimate the other day, yeah. and we were just talking about uh, black people in front of television. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like th- this. What was it back in like the '30s or '40s? Don't quote me on this, but you know, it was rare to it was unnormal to see anyone a black person make a mainstream role on TV unless if they were either a maid or a slave in um in recording I mean, slavery was still around during that time especially in the south yeah so yeah. like so you know and and just what hollywood portrays or still wants to represent what they don't want to represent clean they pick and choose like i mean yeah they pick and choose what they want to represent they're very picky and choosy yeah. and i think i think it's long overdue mm-hmm. but because the country right now is so divided I think that it causes a lot of turmoil, but I think in a monetary standpoint, I think 
that's pretty fucking genius. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it gets people talking. I mean, I feel like it's a different type of representation too, because like, um, like Jen and I saw this show called Vida and it's, it has a lot of like queer lesbian gay representation and it but also talks a lot about the black and brown community as Latinos. Mm-hmm. And I think that but that's a fictional story. It's something that was made up to cause like topics to happen. Like you guys are actual people. Like yeah it's reality TV and, and some things are staged and some things are you either you're enticed to have these conversations, but it's something that would happen in the real world. It would, it would be something that you and I would talk about a gossip with like our Absolutely. little room. It'd be something that would just you know it would just happen naturally. Mm-hmm. You know? I was reading this article the other day just someone's thought on the ultimatum in general when it comes to reality TV. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that, you know, you can try to shove uh, fictional characters and TVs and movies under the rug all you want and make them disappear. But the interesting thing about the reality aspect of it, of reality TV, no matter if you get a season two, three, four, five, or six, this particular season that is out, even if you don't continue, which I hope they do, but even if they don't continue Mm -hmm. um, uh, the seasons, that these people are real are are real yeah and when the when the cameras go down they're going to continue being the people that they are they're not going to stop no so that gives the place of hey not only can queer people in real life real couples real relationships not can they just like live but they can actually thrive and they can exist and be be truly themselves it's out there i think that that's so what you're doing is you're normalizing queer existence because we exist we're not going anywhere we don't we're not a fictitious character like how you were saying where we just kind of come in and come out and if the sequel doesn't happen and the sequel doesn't happen Mm -hmm. and the character is never talked about again like in be that if they decide to never do a season four then that show has has been done those characters die it's fictitious Mm -hmm. and and who's to say those characters are actually queer in real life representing their character exactly but you're going to be here no matter what no matter if the ultimatum gets a season two or a season three yeah like you're still here and you're queer Mm -hmm. (laughs) like you're queer you're You're still here and you're queer yeah i mean i know i know obviously it's a very controversial show and um you know it's reality tv yeah that's all i will say about that but there are so many real aspects to it and i just think that it's just something that I am proud of. No matter the outcome, no matter what people take it as, no matter how people perceive the show to be and, and all the people in it, honestly, I take a step back of regardless of what's going to happen, regardless of what you're all going to see, it is so powerful because I believe in my heart, and I'm also speaking on behalf of a few other cast members, is that it's it's bigger than ourselves. Yeah. And I, I'm just yeah. happy to be a part of that. And that makes me happy because I feel like a couple weeks ago, actually almost, almost months ago when we first started talking about this and, and you know, we were having this conversation about starting this podcast, you were kind of like, I'm kind of scared to see like what people are going to say and to see like how your like that paradigm shift that you've had in like your mindset. You're just like, okay, cool. At first I was kind of like nervous. I was kind of scared because I didn't know what to expect. Now the trailers are out, the teasers out, you know, even though people are saying these negative comments, like you're, I think you're taking a more positive look on it. We're like, I'm going to have a ripple effect in this world, Like I'm going to leave something behind. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not necessarily, I, I could give two shits what anybody has to say. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I've, you know, we've done, <clears throat> um, we've gone to all cast members have gone to therapy and we prepared for what's to come. this for what's to come. <laughs> what's yeah. to come? Literally, we're preparing for what's to come. And, um, but I've always been pretty secure about my sex yeah. identity orientation, like all of that. I, I've been really solid in that. Um, but like you said, I think it's just the beauty of knowing that like, no matter what happens, yeah. it, it's going to be okay. And looking at these comments, like you were saying, looking at these comments, I'm reading them and honestly, I don't feel that much. I don't feel that much about it. Like if anything, yeah. I just feel more compassion. And I think that leads us into the next topic, just about how people, um, you know, have a right to their opinions. Yes. And we, and you know, me and Kari like have, I don't know if it's, I know more people think like us, um, but it's, I don't They're feel like very it's, it's talked about. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not we kind very of, vocal. But we're not, I mean, we kind of both look at the sense of like, you, you see right wing people and you see left wing people and, you know, just people attacking each other. And <clears throat> I, me in particular, like I'm looking at these comments and I'm just seeing the left 
versus the right and people attacking each other left and right. And, and I don't identify as either one of them. Yeah, me either. And that's funny <laughs> that's too because our, our parents would probably have a heart attack coming from East Coast and being like, oh, you're supposed to be a Democrat or oh, you're supposed to be a Republican. You know, you're supposed to represent this, that, and the third based on how you grew up, what, you know, your socioeconomic background was. Yeah. But I think that us, as you see. Yeah, us and our generation, I think that we're kind of taking it as how are you treating people as a whole? How are you like, you know, like the soul is super important. Like what is the ripple effect of what's going to happen in our children's lives? If we choose to have children, if we don't have children, like how is that going to affect me as an older adult? And I think that neither one of those is left nor right. And I feel like all it is, is people just want to argue. They just want to argue all day. And I can see it for the big picture. I was like, okay, cool. Like I can see where the left is coming from. I can see where the right's coming from. I don't Absolutely. agree with the left. I don't agree with the right. We can take little bits in here and come to an agreement. But I think that that's just how we think. Yeah. And we could, like, of course we hope for an agreement, right? Yeah. And it's not that we want to, you know, obviously we're, we're more, how do I say it? We're not liberal, but we're more like, uh, I feel like we're peer mediation yeah. at this point. Yeah. We're peer mediation. I mean, okay, the, of course we stand for yeah. queer rights and the queer movement. Absolutely. I but I don't that. think that that should come at the cost of throwing bombs on other people and shaming other people just because they have a different opinion other than us. And at the end of the day, why do we feel like as a culture, we need validation from other people to actually make us yeah. happy on the inside? Why are we worrying about the comments of somebody else so much to where we're losing sleep? And on the flip side, why are they feeling the need to, to go out of their way yes. of the day to identify and attach to this fear or phobia or whatever it is so much that they're going to ruin their whole fucking day and go on a fucking comment section and just go all out? Mm -hmm. Why does, why is that? so important to them when it has nothing to do with them and, and and this this is i used to live in north dakota this and this brings me back to somebody that i had totally off topic but on 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 target is we were talking and and she pretty much was saying she goes if things were reversed and christianity was like islam was back in 9 11 how would we feel today as somebody who is a devoted catholic or a devoted christian or very conservative or very democratic how would you feel if the paradigm was shifted and a lot of the people that i was with when we had this conversation they all looked like they couldn't even fathom the thought of what that would feel like but they had so much positivity to say about who they were right now and i was like but do you see how you're representing yourself right now do you see how positive you're talking about yourself i'm like that's what queer people have to do every day that's what black and brown people have to do every day mm -hmm. you know that's what latinos have to do every day what if you have to you couldn't even you can't even sit here and have a conversation with me and and think about what if because you can't even wrap your mind around it and these people walk through this life every single day and they still choose to be happy they still choose to pick themselves over what it is that individuals are saying yeah and it's just i just don't i just don't personally understand it and, and you and i i mean like it, it, this just doesn't represent just queer culture right or no. just race or anything like no. everyone doesn't matter if you have two Christians, like they're still going to end up having conversation with each other. And then they're going to explore that they have differences. Mm -hmm. You and I, we're friends. We get along really well, yeah. but I'm sure our upbringing was different. We're, we both ride or die the fucking East coast, but, but no, we, <laughs> but we know you grew up more in a, like a Puerto Rican, like Latina culture. And like, here yeah. I am, like I grew up in a completely different, different, uh, world, structure. different social economics, like everything, everything, everything is different. different. Everything's different. So um, how can we like just go past each other's differences and not cause hate? And then that also, as much as we want conservative people just to be a little bit open-minded, um, at the same time, if they're not, what I don't understand is why we, as a queer culture, a lot of times will throw bombs, will fucking cancel people, will cling on to their own identity and hold on so close to it to the point where if they don't have this identity, if they don't have this label, if they don't have validation that their mindset is, is completely fucked. Yeah. And I think that brings us to the point of, um, what, uh, so tonight I'm going to, uh, the Alok, I'm going to say the Alok concert. It's not the Alok concert. concert. <laughs> the Alok. No, 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 the Alok, uh, um, stand up. Yeah. Um, they are just a huge, huge mainstream non-binary figure. Um, I mean, they, they do comedy. Uh, they are uh, a poet. I mean, they are so impactful just in the gender space. And mm -hmm. we're going to a little show tonight. But, you know, bringing up on this topic itself about respecting each other's differences, mm -hmm. but also, and this is something I stand for so much and I've been saying yeah. for years, but yes, uh, um, they have such a great way of just normalizing and putting into words um, 
they speak about. Well, let me just play the trailer. Yeah, let's just play the trailer, and then we'll we'll get on there. I'm gonna cut that shit off. Oh my god. I can't control how other people see me, how other people treat me, but I can control how I see and how I treat myself. When I started to make the choice to treat myself with compassion, I unlocked a superpower to feel compassion for everyone. So now, when people do harm to me, I pity them. Imagine having the ability to live on Earth, such a sacred place, mm -hmm with so many beautiful things mm -hmm. and wasting your time hating me when you could be free. Yep. That's like, like, it, it's just <laughs> so impactful. They thing. are so good with their words. Oh, hundred percent. I'm like, damn, why are you so good? It, and it's funny though, because I know when we talked about like our coming out stories and our stuff like that, we kind of had two different like upbringings, um, similar, but like not similar, you know, we had our own coming out stories, but like my thing is like with the church, with my issue, like, I was so happy who I was and I didn't think that there was anything wrong with it. But then when people started to talk behind my back and say things, I, I was thinking to myself, like, why are you going out of your way to say these things? I have not disrupted your life mm -hmm. in any way. I have no impact on your household, on your children, on your finances. Why is what I'm doing and living and how I'm living my life such a detriment to you? Mm -hmm. And that was, it's just... I don't think I, I, I still, I mean, I can understand it, but I still don't understand why that's still happening in 2023. I, I don't think, understand. And, and I think from the, the shallow surface, we could look at it in a perspective of this person doesn't like what this person does. And it's kind of like, well, why do you, you know, but who, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> who gives a fuck? I just no, don't fucking care. But this is my, this is my theory yeah. is that it, when people, when people ask, uh, when people say very, interesting things, right? And yeah. they come out of a place of insecurity. There is always a fear aspect to it. And when we go a layer deeper, and this is on both sides, not just uh conservative, we're talking liberal, liberal yeah, yeah, everything. Not democratic, this, not conservative, exactly. just, just a population as a whole. If it affects us that much, it goes deeper. And I think the question we need to explore here is why do you have this fear? Why do you have this need to do that? Why do you have this need to bully people? Why do you have this need to project that out onto other people? Like, what is the projection you? factor? Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, yeah, there's a lot of theories, but I think yeah. if you go even a third layer down, it's, there's not enough self-compassion and self-love there. And I think that that goes back to what Alok was saying. Yeah. How do you not have that much com when you have and you build your own wall, your own fortress of self-compassion, when you build the structure of the, uh, your own home, of your own soul, and that is so fulfilled, mm -hmm. you become impenetrable. You walk around with this fucking yeah. aura around it's you. It's like this God complex. You. With the, it's like the invisible cloak from like Harry Potter. Yeah, put it on, and like you can walk around the library, and like no one can fuck with you. Yeah. And that goes both okay. ways, not just on like, you know, conservative or any other type of way. It, it goes on both ways where, um, well, that's like, wait, let's, let's go the conservative route. Like, okay. like God, religion, like, right. When people are like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm shielded by God. I'm shielded by the angels. I'm shielded by all these things. N nothing you can do can, can penetrate that. It's the same thing. It's just a yeah. different way of thinking, but essentially it's the same thing. It, it doesn't matter. Right. It, it, let's go the um, conservative Christian route. It doesn't matter if I'm turning on the TV and I see Netflix and in the top 10 is Ultimatum Queer Love. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't matter yeah. because I'm not trying to fall into your vagina. I'm not trying to just accidentally, I'm, I'm yeah. sipping this bang energy drink and oh, oh my God, I, oh, I look at vagina. Like it's not happening like that. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> Oops. I looked at the channel. Oh my god. I'm gonna cancel it because we said vagina. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you have that that um that force of energy within yeah. you and that com self compassion so much, it's self -love. if you are if you are yeah, right, if you have like, conviction, know who you are, what you believe in, it's seeing the ultimatum on the top ten on Netflix when you scroll isn't going to determine whether you go to heaven or hell. No. It's not because you know who you are on the inside. Yeah. And then it goes on the more, uh, you know, like liberal side of it too. Like 
when you know you are lesbian, when you know you're non-binary, when you know you're transgender and you feel that within your soul, yeah. you don't, of course it's nice, that will be the utopic world, but you don't need that fucking license or that piece of paper to say, hey, you know what? You exist. You are who you, you are. You are who you are. Or, you know, of course it's nice. But that it also that. makes a big difference. Our, our friend Roman is, yes. is trans and he finally got mm-hmm. the correct driver's license and passport mm-hmm. after That's years. Serious. And like, I feel like that was such a mon- like monumental moment for us as friends. But then I was like thinking about it. I was like, holy shit. Like we're so happy and so proud of this. But like, this is like, this is not us. Like he had to live mm-hmm. this fake life where people would look at the ID and look at him and be like, what the fuck is this? When we were going, uh, when we went to Mexico. Yeah, we were and crossing we, the border. Yeah, I, I crossed the border um, with Roman and he educated me so much about all of this. He had to go through his his dead name. Um, that That's in the system when you cross the border. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he, the experience we had wasn't that bad, but he had to keep on telling the, the border patrol like, hey, you know, this is my dead name. This is, you know, and... Um, they just gave a couple questions. You can look yeah. at it. Didn't give him a hard time, but he's told me that he crossed the border many times. He actually had to cross the border every day and he's gotten harassed so many, so many different times. But you know, the thing, I guess the takeaway from this is that yes, I am sure we're all happy for women. Roman's like probably like a, like a relief. Like, you know, I remember yeah. when you showed me the license, we were so happy. We're so happy. Like, oh my God. Yes. 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 <laughs> but, but. It was yeah. not the license that he saw. That wasn't the day where he's like, I'm trans. He knew that in his heart yeah. for a very long time, if yeah. not his entire life. So, but he knew that. He knew yeah. that in his core. And it, whether people agree with him or not, or attack him or not, of course, no one likes to be attacked. No one likes to be made fun of. And of course, that can hurt. But at the same time, you know, on both ends of it, not speaking for Roman, just speaking for other trans people or um, yeah. in the community. throwing bombs at other fucking people and throwing bombs back like that's just going to cause more diversity more hate more division in a world where we are already so divided i think it 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 opens this question i have maybe to for us to explore yes we want people to think that we exist yes we want them to believe that we exist but what do we do when they don't even agree with that um what do we how do we react when at the end of the day they honestly don't believe it and that goes to i've seen in the comments and the ultimatum comments that they say that they also have a right to their opinion because you'll get in the comments right we'll put some of these comments up here like yeah. i'm not gonna watch this and they're being all rude and yada yada like i'm not gonna watch this and you know other people are like why are you not gonna watch it you're homophobic you're this you're that you're that and then they go well i have a right to my opinion so i mean I, that's just something i want to explore a little bit like do they do they have a right to their opinion everyone has a right okay right it's the first amendment everybody right? has Every, yeah, right? everybody, everybody has the right yeah freedom of speech. so where do we go from there so i think that i don't go out of my way to say slanderous shit or to voice my opinion about every other heterosexual show that's out there like, if you think about it, every single show is a husband and a wife. Oh, you know, that's just kind of what it is, unless there is a character that is specifically portrayed to be queer. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a movie, it doesn't matter if it's a show. Like, you can go on Netflix and they've got thousands of things that are represented with man and woman because that is what is portrayed in the media. That is what's portrayed to be normal in real life. So I don't feel, I, that's what we normalize. But if, like I said earlier, if the, if the agenda was flipped and queer was normalized, I don't think that people would be like, oh, this is girls, like, heterosexual people Mm -hmm. you know i just feel like everybody's entitled to their own opinion like you said i just feel like i didn't go out of my way to say ill a boy and a girl kissing ill a husband and a wife gross why do people feel the need to say that about queer people i just don't understand it it's because they have a negative taste about it and i think it goes down yeah yeah but it goes down to a a a deeper fear too again that's it goes down a deeper layer than that I think it's society. I think it's a deeper layer for sure. Like we're, we're definitely like a, a layer cake right now. We're yeah. sure, like a seven layer <laughs> like, cake. Like, like but Grand I think Canyon that it's just a lot of it. Yeah. I think a lot of it has to do with what is portrayed. Okay. In society. Mm-hmm. And now queer is now being accepted. And I don't think people, people are, are creatures of habit. People like they do the same thing over and over again, over again. They have the same type of behaviors. That's why it's easy for individuals like us to read people right. because it's the same bullshit every day. And I think that this is disrupting 
their flow. I think it's disrupting oh, yeah. their routine. I think it's disrupting what the only thing that they've ever known, which goes Look, down to your things, layer. Yeah. Fear. Fear. You know? Fear. It's I mean, something that, that it's the, the unknown. The best things in life come with disruption. Like, I mean, that's how, that's how you make movement in society. Yeah. It really does. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was about to get deep. deep. I was about to get deep in that layer. Oh my that God. I love it. I love it. Um, no, I was saying that like people, oh yeah, I was gonna say that, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> I don't know how production ever dealt with my ass for two months. I would talk in the room, like in interviews and yeah. stuff, I would just go down the rabbit hole and They'd then be like, All right, like Tim. okay, like shut up. <laughs> like, yeah, like reel back in. I'm like, what, what was the question? What was the interview question? What were you saying? I know, I know. Um, but here's food for thought is that when you go to a restaurant, if you're going on Yelp, if you're going on Google, People are tend to uh, show their opinions more about negative things and negative experiences and than they do than positive. So when you look at uh, Google, I don't really think, or like the reviews and stuff, I don't think that really reflects the restaurant as a whole because I can, there's like so many restaurants I've had a great experience in or so many places I've gone to where I actually didn't like do a review. But you have that one goddamn place we where have, we have that one bitch <laughs> that at Aladdin's eatery said that the falafels were drier than what did she say? Then I think she said a dried cat turd <laughs> on a summer day. On a and summer I day. went and I had this falafel. And I lived overseas. This was the best fucking falafel I ever fucking had. <laughs> so Aladdin's eatery in R- Rocky River, Ohio. Rocky River motherfucking Ohio. Best fucking falafel. Like just everything was fucking fire. But like, like you said, she was writing about her negative experience, and I, that was the first thing that came up when we were looking where to eat. And I looked at my friend Kathleen, my coworker at the time, she was my work wife. She looked at me. She was like, "How dry this falafel was." I was like, "Nothing. A little hot sauce can't fix." Ooh. And we made a joke out of it, and we fucking went. Yeah, best falafel I ever had. But that's my thing. Like, it's it was her opinion, mm-hmm. and she was okay. She was allowed to voice her opinion. But my thing is, when does your opinion go too far? Mm-hmm. Like, where is that gray area where it's like, oh, should I say this or should I not say this? But it's also coming from emotion. It's yeah. also coming from an invoked feeling because it's when feeling are, within you. Yeah, when people are emotional, it, 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 it leads them down. Like, when people get mad, when people get upset, when people are, are, are feeling flustered, it is an emotion that is uncontrollable, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's the same thing. Like, we talked about anxiety and, and what was the other one? Anxiety and, um, I'm having a brain fart. Tiff had a moment on having a moment. It's just a little, it happens. Um, <laughs> now I'm really going to lose it. Like, um, oh my God. like anxiety and excitement are the same thing. It's the yeah. same feeling within the body. The body does not know the difference. So whether you're excited yep. or having a full blown anxiety attack, the body is, is releasing the same chemicals, same neurons. The body's reading it as this same exact roller coasters can yeah. be very fearful and you know, like it, thrilling moments can be very fearful, but it's also could be exciting because but moves. the body doesn't know the difference. No, it, it, it's the same type that of reaction. So, so I was gonna say that it is a intrinsic belief that you have. Like where you, when you said that when opinions go too far, when you start, there, there's a, there's like a threshold, right? Where you say, Oh, you know what? I don't like this food. But then when you go farther and farther and farther, it's like, what are you actually projecting at that point? Do you, are you just mad because you've had upsetting experiences in your life that someone fucking burn you? Did, did you get food poisoning at the ass where you were bleeding out of your butthole for five days? Yeah. Like, like then I could see you? why you would be mad at like yeah. the food and like be mad at the restaurant service. Do people not pay enough attention to your life? So that's why you're, you're complaining about the fucking service so bad where you're just arguing all the fucking time. Well, like to, to bring Netflix back into this now, <laughs> yeah, you really just need to sponsor me already. So pretty much if, it, if you guys have seen the new show beef that came out and it has Al- 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 Ali Wong in it. And I can't remember the other fucking actor's name. I'm having such a brain fart and I'm so sorry. I love you. But my whole thing is like, it's like this dark humor drama type of thing. And it's just like the road rage incidents. Like it's not really about somebody cutting you the fuck off. It's not really about somebody being a fucking asshole and blaring on their horn. Like what the fuck happened to you today, Betsy at fucking work? Like you're such a fucking bitch. Wow. Betsy. Like <laughs> wow. the Betsy that I know in real life, I love her, but I just don't know why Betsy came, came up to my mind. Yeah. But <laughs> sorry, like, it's just like, 
it's just, it, it, it mind boggles me that it's not necessarily like what happened to you, what happened in your life. And that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's more time than I'm willing to, and too much yes. energy that I'm willing to I'm invest in somebody exactly. else that, because I don't give a fuck. And that goes back to what Alok was saying in that video yeah. of what, of there clearly isn't a level of enough self-compassion and, in empathy. You, and, and empathy of where it, it can like affect you that much mm-hmm. to where you feel the need to start projecting that out into people. And if you have enough self love within you and you've done the inner and work, done the and inner you work, know yes. how to fix things. I feel like it things. makes those life things, the things that happen in life easier to digest and things don't build up. They don't boil over and they don't become these negative ripple effects that a lot of the times these people yeah. take out these fucking trolls and it's, yeah, take out <laughs> social media. Trolls. And it, trolls. And I think again, it goes down to the deepest layer is the importance yeah. of mental health. It goes down to the importance of mental health yeah. on both sides. We need to have enough inner work and you know, like we're students of life, right? And it, there will always be things that trigger us, you 100%. know, like I was having a conversation with a friend a couple months ago and we talked about, I, I was very triggered about something and we had deep conversations and we talked it out and actually we built and went like unpeeled layers and layers and layers. And we're like, but why, but why, but why? And I gave like what my actual fear was, you yeah. know? And I think that that is just something that we need to all explore, but it's easy to get lost in the ebbs and flows of like the ego and everything. And speaking real quick before we go into another topic about normal queerness in the media. media. Um, when you were given examples of like seeing a queer person like represented on TV or seeing, you know, typical like man and woman with being a husband and wife on TV. I think it's interesting how a lot of people like flip the fuck out when they see queer people represented in media. Um, but it's interesting because here they are watching fucking, uh, murder shows and, you know, like, and, and, it, they're they're normalizing the serial killer that yeah. like is, they, have is empathy, the media. they have empathy like for Joe. Joe. They have empathy and for they, Joe. They have empathy you. for, for Joe you. on yeah. you. They got you. like you know like and it's just like how do you have empathy how do you, for Joe on you? How do you have empathy it's for a serial killer, but not a person that wants to be a good okay, person? I have the answer to that. I have the answer to that. Have the answer to that. Yes, desensitization. Like you are desensitized. So like okay true crime, right? It's really fucking addicting. Like you got to remember like when the black Dahlia, and we're going a little off topic, but the black, when the black Dahlia happened, right? People were like, Oh my God, this was the most grotesque thing that's ever happened. I can't believe this girl was like chopped up and placed on a lawn and da 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 da. That happens every day in the inner city of Chicago. That happens all the fucking time in DC. This happens all the fucking time in New York city. But it happens all the time in anywhere. Queer life too. That's what I'm saying. But that's but what I'm not saying. But like all this stuff that happens like Marsha and stuff like that in New York city, like dur- during that queer time, these are normal things that happen to normal people, but because we've talked about it and it becomes so addicting, we are then desensitized to what is really happening. And then we're able to be like, like me, like, I mean, I'm, I have a medical professional, but I don't get grossed out by blood. I don't get grossed out by that type of stuff. Like I can like literally watch a dead body and probably eat a salad and be like, oh, that's kind of nasty, you know? Yeah. But somebody else that could be like wine vinaigrette on your uh, salad. That's what I'm saying. It's the vinaigrette from fucking Chipotle, you know? And so... <laughs> That vinegar is fire, but anywho, but like there's other individuals where like, let's say like they're a librarian or they're just somebody that has, has, has lived such not a sheltered life, but was not into true crime or ha- had no exposure to those elements that I was exposed to would be grotesque by the things that I was going through. But I think it has to do with exposure. I think it has to do with, again, the mainstream media desensitizing certain things. So what you're saying is that the more exposure that we see yeah. in the meter of queer culture, okay. the more normalized it will become despite the pushback. Yes and no, right? Because dog training. I used to be married to what? somebody who's a dog trainer. <laughs> okay, I, you get I, a dog. I would love no, to just you get a fly on the wall inside of your brain. It can go the Lord Lord. Okay, right. You have a dog, right? You get a dog, you want to desensitize them. You ring the doorbell, the dog barks like a fucking maniac, right? Yeah, right? especially right? Chihuahua. Then you keep redoing it, right? And mm-hmm. over time, the dog starts to bark less. And less to where it completely ignores the doorbell ringing. Unless if you're it a has doorbell. become yeah. <laughs> Unless it's, it's probably a golden retriever lab. The other dog's probably not so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you golden retriever lab lovers out there, Aww. facing bitches. Anywho, but 
Um, like I was saying, the dog eventually becomes desensitized. It starts to learn this is not a scary sound. I don't need to protect my home. Whatever this is, this is just somebody entering, going. It could be any noise, whatever. And it's kind of like, that's it. It's the same thing with social media. And I think that bringing it back, like, I think there's a lot of good that's happening in queer representation. Mm -hmm. And there's also a lot of bad where I think there's so much bad that keeps on happening on a day-to-day basis where people kind of tend to just ignore it. You know, and I think yeah. that's within the queer community. We're just like, okay, cool, like another dead I mean, queer yes, person. Or, yeah. I mean, yes, I know. I mean, it's fucking horrible. We're desensitizing it, right? And that goes back to, like, not to get into it at all, but, like, school shootings, is, it's become numbed out at this point. Yeah. But we still, there still are people that will lose their fucking shit over... I mean, just, but that is a particular things. set of people that have been yeah. affected, like, right, the Uvalde shooting and all that type of stuff, the, the stuff that happened in Florida. Um, but like when Columbine happened, it was a national, like, wake up, call. Dis- wake up call. It was a national disruption because it was one of the first. Now, you know, 20 years later, almost 30 years later, you know, from Columbine happening, the amount of school shootings that we have, there's so many of them that it's like, okay, cool, like, you know, we'll just tell our kids how to hide. We'll tell them how to do this. We'll tell them how to do that. Like, like that's just what it is. That's you know, it's, it's become desensitized because before that Columbine was on the TV for years, years, yes. years, years. It was an years, NBC yep. special. They did all, all of these, like, I went to interviewing a, the mom, the conference. mom is now a speaker. Yeah. yeah. I went to a conference like yeah. in, uh, you know, back when I grew up in, um, like a Christian youth group, I went to a conference where the main speaker was a, a parent mom. from a mom of, of Colin. Yeah. Like where she, like I saw she her said yes. In college. She said yes. Yeah. 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 I saw her in college. And, and my thing is like nowadays, the amount of children that have died, like there's in the amount of people that have been affected by it. Like it's such a, it's, it's a lot of people and it's on a grander scale, mm-hmm. but it's also become like, Oh, this happened in Texas. This happened in Florida. This happened in Utah. This happened in Chicago. And it's kind of like, whatever. You know, like unless it really affects influential people or it affects people of a specific stature, I don't think that people really take it in like they did when the Black Dahlia happened, when true crime really got mm -hmm, popping. Like they were just like, okay, cool. Like this is another, it's another beheading. That's another whatever. Like, you know, it's just, again, desensitized. Okay. How many people were scared to drop to to, to go to Mexico? Because they're like, oh, the cartel, Sinaloa cartel, this, that, 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 that. Now we go to fucking... We just drive over the border and be like, yo, do you want some good wine? Do you want to go yeah. to a Michelin star restaurant? Let's go. With literally no fear yeah. Like that anything could possibly happen to us. Yeah. So do you think that, again, this is asking a question, is that yeah. the desensitization, like that could either be positive or, or negative, negative. Because yeah. you can desensitize serial killers. You can desensitize school shooters. Yeah. You can desensitize the... Uh, queer exposure in the media. I'm assuming, like, right, yeah. like with enough exposure, whether it's negative or not. And I think that that is the importance of why we need representation in um, scripted TV, in yeah. reality, in in the workplace, in families, I yeah. mean, in schools. I mean, just everywhere. I think that that's why we need it. Yeah. Um, and I think we're talking too about like queer baiting and then like retroactive representation. Yeah. So like queer baiting is like in a show. Like we're watching a show. We're just like. Like, let's pretend Liz McGuire, right? We're all in that era. Like, we never knew if, 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 if Gordo was like, is he straight? Is he not straight? Does yeah. he like Lizzie? Does he like somebody else? Like, what is, like, but you could never, you never know what he identified as unless he was like, yes, I actively like a girl. Or yes, I actively like a boy. Yep. That's fear baiting. But like, retroactive representation is what you guys are. Whether it's fictitious or reality TV, you guys are who you are mm-hmm. no matter what. Yep. And that's it. I think, I think that that's so important to have, I mean, both of, of what you were saying, but also like, for instance, what was it? Like the characters, like the gym school teacher, the female gym school teacher, you yeah. just never knew if they were gay or no. not. And was that a, was that a thing? Do you think if we're to put it in Hollywood, do you think that that was a thing they did on purpose to start sure. the exposure? I don't think it was to start the exposure. I think that that's just really what it was. Yeah. I think that they were trying to make it as realistic as possible, but at the time it was controversial. Mm -hmm. So they made them look and talk and represent and I, and, and look a certain way, but they never identify Yeah. Which is queer baiting. Yep. And I think now the world is becoming more acceptable and we're also getting, you have to remember back then it was only gay white men Mm -hmm. that were successful. If you were black, 
brown, Asian descent, a- a- any other ethnicity other than Caucasian, you yep. were fucked. And a male. So like even you back in the day, you would have been fucked, mm-hmm. right? If you were a lesbian, whatever, whatever it is that you identified as. It's very different now. There's a lot of times where like me, like I'm a director, there's not a lot of keep times where I run into somebody that's a Latina, a under 30, or, a, you know, in the LGBTQI plus plus whatever, yeah. you know, You're category. Category. I'm like the yeah. unicorn of the company. But as I start to progress in bigger companies now, like with the Department of Defense, and then when I'm right now I'm in the healthcare sector, there are more people that look like me in these manager and director and executive what leadership is- roles. Because they got tired of their shit. Mm-hmm. And, but that wasn't the case 30, 40 years ago when these script writers were writing these movies, when they were writing these shows, when they were like, Hey, let's, let's see if this pilot episode will go. I think that the representation and the diversity inside of HBO, Netflix, Paramount are people that look like you and me mm-hmm. are people that look like the girls and then they, yeah, the people, yeah, the, 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 the people, the big tomato. I don't know how do I say that? Like, the yeah. piece of the old tomato. Like, and I think that's why this diversity is coming through. I think that we have kind of, and I mean, we're lucky because we were in like the 2000s era. People in the 70s, 80s, and 90s really fucking went through it, you know, and now they're just like, let's make a change. Let's make a change. Let's make a change. Mm-hmm. Let's make a change. And I think that by knocking on the door and not stopping to knock on the door, just continuing to do it, yeah. A, is desensitizing the doorknob, which is why these people are able to slide in these scripts and able to slide in these characters and able to get things like the ultimatum queer love approved for social media. Yeah. You know, or for all these media platforms. I don't think that that would have happened. Even if, just like women. Yeah. Right? Just I remember anybody. on our, um, just a, I mean, obviously this is my first time ever in some sort of production. This is not even like a small production. From what I heard, I was like talking to the different producers and stuff. They're like, dude, this is a big production. Cause I, I, I didn't know the yeah. size of it. The size was like 300 something. Like I, I, I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's huge. Yeah. And, um, so I didn't know the difference though. And what I also was told was that just the production itself, the teams, like the, our video, um, videography director was female, which is kind of unheard of. Yeah. And then the EP of the entire project is female, which is rarely heard of either. So we had a lot of female representation. And then we also had a lot of queer representation in the production yeah. itself. And I think that that's just like, it was a project. Again, I don't know any of this. I just walked into it. I'm like, oh, yeah, here I am. Cool. Like, I'm here. Um, yeah, I'm here. But you know, a lot of people were so proud to work on that project because it was just a lot of different minds and different cultures Being and able different. To come together. Yeah, and they're like come together. And that's my thing too. Like people are like, and then we're gonna. And two people were on set too. Yeah, I mean, it was not. <laughs> and I know we're gonna get backlash because. I'm going to ask you this question and just be, just be honest because I'm going to play devil's advocate here. The EP and the, 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 the videographer, were they white females? Uh, one was, one was not. Okay. So that's good. So the EP of the entire project. She, she also does, um, she was the EP of, um, Real Housewives of OC. Okay. Um, cause, cause then we're going to get comments. We're going to get people be like, oh, but they're Caucasian women that mm-hmm. have no diversity. But my thing is it all starts with women getting up there and then diversity can happen because if we allow and this is not me saying i hate men because i'm a lesbian blah 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 blah. but for the most part my a lot of my career has has i am the only person sitting at a table of 12 plus 60 plus you know aged white men Mm -hmm. and if even if there's another woman i don't care if she's fucking white purple yellow fucking orange uh, turquoise whatever fucking color she is like as long as she's there that is representation for me enough as long as she can do her fucking job good too yeah to do i don't even fucking care if she can fucking do her job right <laughs> bitch. like just fucking take that take that 10th seat like yeah, yeah. please no you know? see no for me i'm just like uh, be qualified yeah uh, yeah, yeah oh 100 quality over quantity and that's a whole different yeah quality yes. over quantity yeah but i you know it just i feel like women kind of work their way into the workforce and now that workforce is allowing us to have diversity and diversity is black and brown and latinos and the lgbtq p lgbt p where'd you get the p plus <laughs> that's just oh, weird. i don't fucking know. oh yeah yeah plus plus i plus yeah there you go you know it's also like people like us yeah to, to also but, this is what i will say though yeah. Yes, we want, you know, when you're sitting at that seat, the tent seat being, you know, like, or, you know, having diversity and spilling as much. But what I will always fucking stand for to this day is not to push all 
straight, cis, white men out or whatever like that. Like, it's not to push them all out. It's not to erase them no. because we don't, they're trying to like, not them, but like just in speaking in general, like how, why would we do the same thing? If, if certain people out there want to erase us, why the fuck are we going to erase 100%. them? Because there are amazing cis, white, straight men. I mean, 100%. They're and, out. And, and they have amazing minds yeah. and they, yeah. they can change the fucking world. And so it's not necessarily about canceling or erasing mm -hmm. um, heteronormative, normalized society. Yes. It's just we want to join the party. We want to fucking yeah. join her at the table, not kick them out. And that kind of goes into like queer spaces too, which I'm sure that could be like a different episode, but I see both sides of that, you know, and not to dig too much into it, but you know, just a little nutshell, it's like yeah. the fact that we can kick people out of our queer spaces. And yes, it should be a, a, you know, as long as I believe, as long as you're an ally, as long as you're, you're accepting and kind, there's a lot of queer space. Long. That's like a, a double standards, right? Yeah. Double standards of, Oh, we're not allowed into a straight I, place. I, I like, think what? that, what? hold on. I'm going to put a pen in it. I think Ooh. I'm going to put a pen in it. I think the reason why, on, queer queer people, people, I man. think that queer people get upset when non queer people or, or just anybody thinks that it's okay for them to go to a queer safe space because a queer safe space has not been a lot uh, around for a long time. Yeah. It is something that is relatively new and it's something well, that it wasn't the sixties, like in New York and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's just, yeah. But who's to say we're talking about Utah, Texas, yeah. like parts of, yeah, yeah, right. of, of, you know, places that are gentrified or, yeah. or haven't had that diversity. Um, it's, I don't think that it's been around long enough for people to share a piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. And I only say that because I'm Latina, but there are still African American and black people that'll be like, Oh, you're my sis or not. Nah, you're not my sis because you're light skin and black means black. Mm -hmm. regardless of us coming from the same descent or whatever the case may be. But that's where colorism and, and being queer starts to make the, the, the water super, super muddy. So when people are like, I want to go to an all black space or I want to date only black people, I respect that because I understand where they're coming from. Yeah. The same as for individuals that only want to go to queer places and only want queer people to be there. I get it. 110%. A hundred and ten percent, but that also means don't bring hatred, bring education into why it is that you chose to do that that situation. And this brings us back to Roman. There's a lot of times where when we're not at a gay place and we're at a street place, nobody knows that Roman is trans. Mm -hmm. He is very passing. I don't yeah. think I think that people just assume that Melody, his girlfriend, is a heterosexual female, yeah. and she identifies as queer. Um, Melody told me that like yeah. she gets backlash from bringing her boyfriend she down in into queer spaces, queer spaces like gossip girl or flicks or riches which are uh gay bars in san diego yeah people shout at them for saying oh great like another fucking like straight, straight, straight people, people in here and yeah. you're like what the but that's also my thing like, like you, you can never win you roman win. and belly shouldn't have to walk around with this id tag that says like Oh, like this is my, you know, female to male boyfriend, like, and I, I identify as queer and I've been a lesbian until I started dating trans, like trans people, like they should not have to walk in and, mm -hmm. and have a bio of who the fuck they are. Yeah. That's, that's what I don't get to. So where do you draw the line of, but it's different if it hits home for it because those are our friends. Yeah, of course. Use, but, but, but you know, do you, but, but, but you and I were out and we were at a, let's say we, we were at a gay place, right? And a bachelorette party comes in of a bunch of fucking drunk white girls yeah. or whatever. And they're trashy. And we're just like, but what if they like, were classy? What if they were classy? What if they were nice? Then what? But that's the thing though. But that's a fresh pride pride. I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a gay, it's such a, it's, it's, it's a, a, such a double episode. standard for me. It's such a double standard for me because I under I think I can empathize where people are coming from. I can see, sense. I can see both sides because I'm, I, I want to be very liberal and I want to be very respectful and I know how I like my things and how I feel and I'm very secure within myself. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. We're secure within ourselves. We have that self love. We have that, you know, that empathy for ourselves and other people. So with queer spaces, I get it. Queer but, representation, I get it. If we were to see, um, like how we feel type of way, right? When, um, or some people, I know some people like personally that feel yeah. type of way. If you're a lesbian at a lesbian bar and all of a sudden you see like a couple straight guys walk in, some people get bad reactions to it. They're like, oh, why are they coming into our safe space? But at the same time, well, what happens to that? 
in the past. Remember how we talked about peeling the onions of the layer and having a seven layer cake? Like what happened to them? Like why is that fear or that thought being invoked? Yeah. Again, it's something that happened to them or something that they're fearful of. Yeah. It's like, it's like but you made your point. Yeah. And, and your then this goes on a sliding scale. Like yeah. one side of the scale is like straight up extremism, right? We yeah. have extremism in religion. We have extremism in like even like LGBT. Q rights movements. And everything like Q, this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Q, Q, Q rights. Queer rights movements. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think it's just double standards when you, like, for instance, when we went to Mexico and we, uh, Friday night when we went to Pablo something something or whatever it was called. No, it's Charlie's. Charlie's. Yeah, Charlie's. And Charlie's. And Charlie's. <laughs> but, like, can you imagine, like, the feeling yeah. it would feel if you have straight people saying underneath their breath, like, why the fuck are those? Dutch in here and like everything. Like I mean, we had a couple of people that gave us a couple of looks, but, yeah, I, but I think, like, but my thing is, we're a very secure group of friends and we're a very confident, established group of friends. I think that if it was a different dynamic of queers that walked in, and I hate saying this, but like, there's some queers that are a lot different than others. It's just like normal people. There's some people that can walk into a room and command respect, and that's it. And then there's other people that come in and you're, they're just like, oh, like, I'm a fucking dog on you or I'm a fucking pick on me because I'm a bully and I know that you're not going to do shit. I feel like our group is a very strong group, very established group. And we walked in that bitch and people kind of gave us a look. And that's just me. Yeah. I like to read the room. Like I'm going to watch to see who the fuck I got to watch out for because I don't trust anybody, period. Yeah. That's just what's always going on in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. And when I walk in, I saw a couple of faces and then I saw some people that were like, those are some hot bitches. Like, I don't know <laughs> if they lick twat, if they fucking, like, dick. Like, yeah, yeah. they're some fine bitches. Like, that's just yeah, the look. Yeah. But I'm able to read the room. And, I, and like I said, it's, it's a very, we're an established group of friends. It, it, and it's, yeah. I hate it because it's a double standard because it's like, yep, oh, the hot, the hot girls that walk into the party are going to get whatever the fuck they want. But that's essentially our, our group, you know? Yeah. Not it's a lot of times more. we go into straight places and it's the straight woman that yeah. gave the mask the attention, but they look like they, they automatically compare like the yeah. other femmes, like, who the fuck is this man? Why is her hair so good looking? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then they look at the mask and be like, oh my God, I'm thinking twice about you. Yeah. You know, I think, I think at the end of the day, the public spaces that we go into, yeah. I don't care what religion you are, what, uh, sexual orientation, what gender you are, every fucking public place should have a sign at the fucking door saying, we, we accept everybody. We will take your money, but we do not accept assholes. We do not accept hate. We yeah. don't accept, <laughs> we don't accept assholes. So like I get more hate from femme girls inside of a queer bar than I do when I'm in a heterosexual bar. And there's gonna and, and, and that's just it's just the reality. Straight places? Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I get more straight women that tell me, Oh my god, you're beautiful, or hey, like where'd you get that top? Or like, oh my god, you're so cool, I love your fucking vibes. When I walk into a gay place, it's like, who the fuck is that? What do you think that is? It's just the double standard inside the queer community, which is the same inside of like heterosexual communities, like blondes versus brunettes and redheads and all the fucking bullshit. I don't know. For me, I feel like if I walk into uh, a gay bar, what, what I tend to get, or I, I guess maybe it's in my head. I don't know. Yeah. But what I tend to get, it's like the masks size me up. I feel like that's what I see. Like everyone's like a, a puffer fish, like a puffer fish. And we're like, <laughs> inflating your ego. <laughs> yeah. It's like, kind of like. Oh, are, are you like top dog, top alpha in here? Like, yeah. I, might all be in my head. I don't know, but that's that's what I sometimes feel when I walk in yeah. that place. Well, to wrap it up, I think that we're gonna get hate from both sides. I think yeah. that some queer people in the queer community are like, there's not enough Asian people, there's not enough Black people, there's not enough Latinos, there's not enough diversity, there's not enough representation, and you're entitled to your opinion. And go ahead and fucking say what it is that you want. I love it. I I want you to have that be a topic of discussion. Like, okay, cool. Maybe they make a queer love ultimatum season two with an all black cast or an all Asian cast. All trans, you know, all trans cast, you know, like who, like maybe like, we need to have these conversations to create these ripple effects. And PS just, to, yeah. uh, it, it got me thinking a lot of these comments on here, um, that I see like on the ultimatum or just like on YouTube and stuff like that. Again, it's our own fucking community. Um, and I get, maybe they're just not aware, but they're like, this isn't queerness. This is lesbianism. You know, they're all uh, women, so it's lesbianism, or like you know. But I, not everybody identifies as a lesbian. Not everyone may identify as a lesbian. That's food for thought number one. But the reason why they're calling it yeah. queer love is because it's a separate franchise again, and they're projecting. I'm hoping to have more seasons, seasons. come, and that's why it's queer because queer represents the general umbrella of all things aside from so cis and straight. You know, yeah. so. Queer love, it, that is a fitting title because season two might be all men. You know, that considered queer love. We're not going to call it lesbian love. You know, what? <laughs> you know what? I also think 
Netflix, y'all are on to something. I think they're calling it's it queer. Science. I think, yeah, it's not data science for sure. Whoever your, your guys' person is. Whoever is your uh, machine learning engineer. Yeah. I Whoever did know. your you data population them. studies and shit like What's that. Y'all are on point, yeah. <laughs> but c- going back to that is I think that calling it queer was a strategic AF motherfucking move. Because everybody knows what a lesbian is. Everybody knows what a gay man is. Queer is not really something that we hear a lot or we don't hear it in that context. Yeah. So they're already invoking conversation, you know, regardless yeah. if you're heterosexual and you're like, cool, like, I don't know any gay people. I don't, whatever. But like, I respect it. Like they love the same way we do. They go through the same trial and tribulations as we do. Like, I respect it. Like queer people are chill. Mm-hmm. Did you, you know? know that originally we were supposed to be season two of the ultimate when we were, when we were filming, we were called season two and it just so happened that season two was going to be, and I, I see both sides. Yeah. Season two was going to be all, um, you know, like female, um, non-binary cast. And then who knows what happens over season three yeah. and four. Well, after production and after filming, they, um, you know, like we got an email and everything they ended up splitting us off and we were then going to be a spinoff. At first I was kind of mad about that. And actually there were a few people that were like a little bit upset about it. Yeah. But I do see both sides at the same time because I'm like, why can't we just, it's kind of like, yeah, we're separate. And then people will probably everyone, you'll never win. People are always going to have opinions. Like, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, um, I hear negative comments too, where people are like, why or why can't we just love like why do we have to be queer love why can't we just be regular love in a season two and then at the other side of the spectrum you have people more conservative people they're like why do they think they're so special that they deserve their own season and it's like at the end of the day this you is like, had your own season, season for a hundred yeah. fucking years yeah okay <laughs> yeah it's like you'll, you'll just never win you'll never win but um you know regardless of the decision as to why they split yeah. it off and everything like that uh, i you know regardless as i hope at the end of the day, again, I think it's a project that's bigger than us and that they help normalize queerness in the media. And I hope this is a huge, huge pivotal moment, um, in the reality television world, because we've had the real L word. We had Tampa Bay's on Amazon prime. We've had a couple things like that, but this is the first all queer reality dating show on the world's largest yeah. streaming platform. Yeah. And I think that that is, it, it's huge. And I hope it creates yes. more seasons, not just with ultimatum. Maybe they'll do a too hot to handle. Maybe they'll do a love is blind anything. or something like that. Anything. anything. And with people that are complaining about the lack of representation, even though I think our season is fucking diverse, but whatever. Um, if you just at least, even if you don't support it or like it or whatever, whatever, like just at least like put it on and get the views because like at the end of the day, when there's more views, there's more money, there's more stuff flowing into it. Even if you want to wash the dishes, yeah, yeah. And even if you don't even want to wash, you just do something and wash the dishes yeah. or go do your life and just hit play. Like because at the end of the day, like that more views and everything that is going to drive the 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 movement mm-hmm. to put more seasons out there or different shows oh, reality shows you know on other platforms not even just netflix where eventually you will get to see the representation that you want that identifies with you yes i agree all right so to wrap all this up pretty much what we're saying is there's going to be negative backlash there's going to be positive backlash there's going to be people in the middle that are divided but i think people that, that their pants. yeah i think that the ultimatum queer love is providing that foundation and that pretty much like that transitional role to shaping the political attitude towards sexuality not only in america but globally i think that that is what this show is going to do yeah i think that it's eventually going to have a positive ripple effect on that i think so too yeah and it'll get a lot of pushback in it's gonna have a lot of controversy but just with anything in life when it's come to any type of movement it starts with the media it starts with entertainment yeah. um i recommend the show on netflix called hollywood mm-hmm. where it, it's all about um it takes place in the 20s or the 30s where you um you know like you see a gay black writer and he, you know it basically he, there's a scene where he's sitting down in the office in, in the 20s and 30s and having a black uh screenwriter is like unheard of and what he's saying is like if you can change the voice and the movement of entertainment you can change the world because it starts with entertainment because that is what you see when you come home from your regular life and turn on the fucking television. Yeah. It starts there and then that spills into your everyday life yeah. and that, that's the movement. So it, it has to start in entertainment and yeah. people are losing their fucking shit over it. Yeah. But um, with all due respect, get over it. 
Get the fuck over it. Get the fuck over it. I think that that's our uh, that's our that's it. <laughs> the moral of the story podcast yep. is it. get the fuck over, over it. it. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. All right. Well, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you six. so much. Uh, um, follow us on TikTok. We need some TikTok yeah. viewers. TikTok uh, viewers. Viewer. podcast, TikTok. Yeah. Um, you TikTok, know, YouTube, YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Spotify just buy for you. Start following us. Tell your friends. Yeah. Tell your fam. Tell your street. Friends too. Yes. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. But well, we'll be back um, for um, episode seven in a couple seven. days. All right. So see you later, please. Bye, please. <laughs> <laughs>